Today, there's no set path or gold standard for defining when adulthood is reached. We often talk about young people, but there's no generic young person. Definitions of what it means to be an adult may vary by the geographic region of our country, by one's ethnic and racial or socioeconomic background. What it means to be adult may also depend on the kinds of opportunities that young people have available to them. It's dangerous to assume that the outcomes of young adults are also simply about the choices that they've made. For some, those choices are plentiful, and for others, they're non-existent. There are, however, several hallmarks of the transition to adulthood today, and I'd like to talk about those now. First, despite all the worry about young adults who live at home, for most young people today, adulthood Early adulthood is a period of living independently before marriage. Young people live in many kinds of households, some of which involve parents, but many of which don't. A much bigger issue is that these are years where young people are not living with a spouse. And incidentally, living at home is not a new thing that was suddenly created by the recession. This recession that we've been through has simply heightened a set of patterns that were in existence since the 1980s, even in times of economic affluence, and were even actually higher in the decades before World War II. While growing numbers of young people are living at home, most of this action occurs in the early 20s, and for most, it's short-lived. It also reflects the close and connected relationships we see between young adults and their parents today. Second, the early adult years typically involve the pursuit of higher education, and a comfortable standard of living today generally requires a college degree. The widespread pursuit of higher education or some training after high school is part of what's driving a longer transition. But it is here that we also see major signs of crisis, as many young people are floundering or failing, especially in four-year institutions, and as many of those students are taking five or six years to complete four-year degrees. Many are also churning through multiple institutions as they make their way. And despite the common refrain that college is for everyone, High school dropout rates in our country are still quite high, and many young people do not have college as a goal or as a reality. The college for all mantra, in many ways, does a disservice to those students who need clearer and stronger pathways into adulthood that don't involve four-year degrees, such as community college or vocational training. Third, regardless of college, young people are taking longer to secure full-time jobs that provide sufficient and stable resources to provide for themselves, let alone to provide for their families. They also have a wide range of employment experiences in getting there. Wages and benefits to those without four-year degrees have eroded, but wages and benefits have also flattened for those with college degrees as well, which only exacerbates worry about college debt and the question of whether a college is still worth it. But the effects of a college education are not just about wages and other kinds of resources. We know that there are persistent effects, positive ones, of education on health, social networks, and civic and political life. Fourth, marriage and parenting now come significantly later. For many young people, the sense is that you have to be an adult to get married and have children. You first have to get your ducks in a row, so to speak, by finishing degrees, getting settled in work, and building your resources. The 20s are experienced in dramatically different ways, depending on whether and when you become a parent. Young adults who become parents early, and especially before completing high school, have far fewer opportunities and lower educational and occupational attainment than those who don't. It is also important to know that increasing numbers of young people are choosing to remain single and child-free. For them, marriage and fertility are not relevant markers of adulthood. Fifth. Young adults have very different options and experiences depending on their family backgrounds and resources. For many young people in the United States, the well-being of them really rests on the investments that parents have made in the two decades prior and on what they continue to do for their children as they move through their 20s. This is not a new phenomenon. The levels of investment on middle class and wealthy families have gotten much higher. And what is emerging today is that low-income parents also know that their kids need support in order to do well, and they're struggling to provide it. These years look very different depending on how well-resourced young adults are. And that's not just about money. That's about emotional support, mentorship, and guidance. 
Finally, young people today are more racially and ethnically diverse, and we see that some groups are really struggling to find productive adult roles.